I'm assuming you're here because you've been following along with our Mars weather app. In this video, we're gonna be doing the little toggle switch. We've already put the HTML of it. We're just gonna be styling it up and actually making it work. So you get the little Fahrenheit Celsius things we can click on, the little things gonna jump back and forth. One of those really useful things to know. So let's jump in and check out how we can do it. All right, let's get this unit toggle going. So the unit toggle we have right here, obviously we need to get this looking a little bit different. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is unit toggle. We have here grid column. I didn't call it unit toggle, did I? I just want to check something. I just called it unit. <laughs> I put unit toggle. This is just unit. Um, it was going in the right place anyway, uh, just because it was the only empty cell. So it made sense for it to go there. But I still like, uh, since we're using grid, we're explicitly stating stuff, we might as well tell it where it should go. Um, and what I'm also going to do here is do a place self end. And uh, yeah, let's just do a place self end and that should move it down to the bottom corner there, which is more of sort of where we want it, right? It's gonna line up that way and it's gonna line up with their text on the bottom there. So it should be in the right spot. Hmm, we're a little bit off. Uh, so we'll, anyway, we have a lot of styling to do here so we can always add a margin to it or something. Um, I think it's just because the wind text is pretty short. Yeah, so we have some empty room there. So maybe we could play around with this a little bit uh, to try and get that working a little better, but for now, I think it's okay. Um, so on my unit, that's okay. Um, let's go back to here for a little bit. Uh, so this is the thing that I ended up changing quite a bit uh, along the way. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave, actually, I'm just gonna save this for a second. Uh, I wasn't seeing anything come up, I had to save there, because <laughs> I just, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so anyway, now we can see we have my, my two toggle things there and we have my button that's right in the middle. So I'm gonna get the button in the middle looking okay first, and then we're gonna play around with the, um, the rest of it. So the unit, uh, then I had my and toggle, which is my button. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a border zero, oh, no, it's not actually. Uh, I'm gonna do a cursor pointer because we want to make sure when we go on top that we get a little hand icon to show that it is interactive and what else do we need on this we need a let's give it a width let's see how that looks that's not too bad uh, I think do we need to give this a height I don't think we'll have to give it a height uh, but we will need to give it a border of let's say two pixels solid and my var color gray there we go. I'm actually going to make this like slightly bigger. There we go. Just because that semicolon in the end of the line there was annoying me a little bit. Um, the background on it, because uh, let's actually, I have my toggle. And then the other thing I want to do in here is do an and after. I guess we'll go with the after. Uh, the, I'm not giving it a height because this is what's going to populate what's inside of it. So if you know anything about pseudo elements, you know we need some content on there. And I'll give it a background as well. So var, whoops, background of our color gray. So it's the same as my uh, toggle, uh, the border that I put on there. Um, I'm gonna give it a border radius of 50%. And now we want to give it a, I'm just gonna give it a height of like, I don't know, point. Let's just do one rem and see what that looks like actually. Oh, and one other thing we're, we're gonna wanna display of block so it shows up. And there we go, we got my nice little circle. I want a little bit, uh, actually let's come back up under my toggle here for a second and just give it a background of transparent, not transparentize, transparent, like that. So there we go, that looks a little better. Um, and actually the unit, um, you know what we can do actually? This could be interesting. Uh, I'm gonna switch this. Let's say my unit here has a color of our color gray. So just because I wanted my F and my C to all, like they're sort of, it should all be faded away. But when I hover, I do want it to change. I'm bouncing back and forth a little bit, but let's see, I want to round the corners on that. I need some space here. So I'm going to create that space first. So margin, I don't want it to be too big. I'm going to go with pixels instead of M's or rems, just because if not, I think it would be a little bit hard to play around with. And now the width of it, hmm. Uh, so let's give this a width, because right now it's not a good width. And I'm going to do a I'm gonna start with 50% and see what happens here. Oh, it actually, that looks pretty good. Hmm, maybe we can just leave it like that and we don't need a calc. We'll see, we'll start there and we'll we'll play around with it if we feel like we need to. Okie dokie, I'm um, also unit toggle. Let's do 
padding of zero. Ah, <laughs> that's interesting. That sort of broke things, but that's okay. Um, padding of zero is okay though. Uh, we need our border radius on here, border radius. Interestingly, if I do 50%, it's gonna give us this weird, ugly oval, which I really don't like. But if we do 100 V max, or you can do something else, it's gonna give you nice round corners, but make it more pill shaped. Be it's, I guess because of the way things are calculated, I don't actually know why this works. I know why the 50% works, because it's going to like the 50% point, and then it's going off. But this, like the V max here would be the same as if I did like, you know, 10, 10,000 PX, like if you have a huge number on it, it's always gonna give you this type of thing, whereas the 50% won't. Um, so if I do 100 V max, it's the bigger between the height or the width of your screen, it just means you're always getting a nice pill, uh, pill shape. I'm just literally changing the number here until I get this to be a circle. There's probably a better way to do it. Uh, well here, my height is one rem. Why am I not just doing one rem here? There we go, we have a circle, <laughs> perfection. Um, another thing I'm going to do on my unit is a display flex. They're already all going next to each other, but you can see now it's actually centered vertically, which is nice. Uh, I could do a gap of like 0.5 M and look at that. It, the gap actually works on flex. This is amazing. I said, we're going cutting edge. We might as well stick with cutting edge. This normally wouldn't work. You could use margins instead. I think Firefox is the only one that supports the gap property right now. And I am in Firefox. <laughs> uh, and I said we're cutting edge, but uh, most people I think uh, for this would be on the toggler itself. We could add a margin on this. Uh, zero on the top and bottom and like a 0.5 on the M on the left and right just to create the spacing we need. That's simple enough. But Gap is on its way. I'm very excited for when all browsers support it. What else do we need to do? That's actually looking pretty good. Now what I want it to do is when I click from one side here to the other for my radio buttons. I want that radio button, like I want this toggle to switch to the other side. And that's where things get a little bit more fun. So to be able to do that, I think we're gonna have to break out of all of this. We are. Um, and this really depends on how you set it up. And actually there's two different ways I could do it. We have my button unit toggle. Hmm. You know what, we could do it. I was gonna do it the other way around, but we have my toggle there. So here's my after, I'm gonna break out of my after. Um, so in my unit toggle, has, so I'm gonna do the ampersand. So my unit toggle has a sibling, which is checked. I'm just gonna change for now color, or background, background, border, color is red. Just to show you, and let's see if it works. <laughs> it's not working because that's the label. Um, so we are gonna have to break out of here just because if I look at this, I, I really wanna be targeting this input and how it's in relation to there. Uh, so this, and basically what we could do actually is if we come down all the way up to here, uh, I could do checked. <laughs> so if anything is checked and its direct sibling is my unit toggle, it something's gonna happen to my unit toggle. So for now, let's just say that the border color becomes red and see if that works. So there you go, this is checked. So my border color is red. And if I go here, this is no longer checked. So it's no longer red. So we get this relationship between whether this one is checked or not checked or, you know, we, yeah. Um, but in this case, I don't want that to happen. I want the after to change. And what do I want to do with my after? I want the margin left to become auto. So now if this works, there we go. It's pushed all the way that way. Actually, I did it backwards. You can see it's working, but it's inversed. Uh, so actually in this case, we don't need anything. Um, so, uh, Oh yeah, actually, I'm gonna, we're gonna put that back on. We're gonna say margin right is auto. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just do, say the, uh, the margin, uh, uh, how explicit should we be? I'm gonna say margin right, margin on the right side is, no. <laughs> is, my margin left is auto. So by, and here my margin, left will be the three pixels, so we set it back. So here we go. So right now the margin left is three pixels and the margin right is auto, so it's coming all the way to this side. I guess I don't really need that, do I? We don't really need that line. Um, but we just need this uh, to overwrite this default state because the default state is gonna be that, where it flies over to that side. So if this one is checked, it's using a margin left of three pixels. 
So the margin left here is three pixels. But if you have one, mar we always see margin left and margin right set to auto to center something. But if one of those margins is set to auto, it's going to push that thing the entire way across. So here we can set that and it's going to fly over to the other side just like that. Awesome. Um, you know, I'm actually going to change all these colors here to my light because I was, I was thinking of something, but this is going to be a lot easier to do than change colors. Light. I'm just going to set my whole, so it's all going to be white. Uh, but then here we can come and set my opacity on this whole thing to like a 0.7. So that grays it out. And then on hover, the opacity will go up to one. So if I hover anywhere here, so we're, sh we're showing that we're more interactive. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Uh, we also want to say that my, uh, did I give my labels classes? I didn't, that's okay. Uh, my unit toggle, my unit here, we can just add a label is a cursor pointer because it's going to give us this feeling that it is interactive. Let's also, uh, and this is just the same as having like dot unit space. So it's any label that's nested inside of there. Just to, and I guess even here, this whole checked thing would be a little bit safer if it was in there, I don't see how it could be anywhere else, <laughs> um, but it's going to make it work only for checked items that are inside. So they're nested inside this unit um, component that we're building out here. So just a little bit more, you know, we're self-containing it a little bit. Again, it's really specific with my unit toggle here. Is it necessarily? Probably not, um, but whatever. Uh, we might as well do a transition on opacity for say 275 milliseconds on a linear. Opacity is one of the few ones I will do as a linear transition. So there we go, if we come on any of this, it just makes it feel a little bit more like we can interact with it. And last but not least, we do need to turn off our inputs here, or not our inputs, but we, we don't wanna see the toggles, we only wanna see the C and the F. So I can't use the screen reader only that I used up here because this has not focus, not active. So if I were to use screen reader only, let's just show you what it would do. Uh, call, uh, not on here, on my input, um, class equals SR only. Um, when I click on that, it would appear because it's in focus state. <laughs> uh, so if I click there, well, that one, I only have it here, but anytime I click on it, um, it would, it sort of appears and then disappears. And then I can't actually click on anything because of the way things are moving around and it's not working at all. Uh, so instead of doing that, I'm just going to uh, do, let's just take all this off, save. Um, I'm gonna copy this and uh, I'm gonna put it on my input. Um, so uh, let's just see, there we go. We can see that it's working, I think. Um, so, you know, I'm not a big fan of nesting things because if, if we do go look at the compiled CSS, let's just go take a look uh, since we're here. Uh, what this results in, is uh, things like this, my unit label, my unit input. I'm not a big fan of doing that. Uh, I like flat CSS, just like CSS select, just class selectors as much as possible. Uh, but I think there's no harm in little, little things like that. Um, as long as you understand why you're doing it and you have a good reason for it, uh, I think it's completely fine. Uh, and you can see there's lots of errors coming up in here, but I have a feeling they're not, it's just related to um, it's just related to the way auto prefixers handled uh, some of these weird things. It doesn't like the syntax uh, for grid that auto prefixers putting on it, uh, but it's making sure auto prefixers amazing. It's making sure that it's working over in uh, in everything here. So anyway, uh, that is why we have some errors there, but there's no actual errors. Uh, let's go back to here. Uh, so there we go. This whole section is working. There we go. Uh, now we need the on click for here, but Kyle will hopefully set that up for us. And I think that's working really well. I have one last change that I do want to make, which is on my toggle, on my toggle, I put a margin 0.5. I'm going to bring that up a bit bigger. I want a little bit more space around that. I think that looks a little bit cleaner. And there we go. So now we can toggle back and forth 
and eventually that will be connected to my units here of Celsius and Fahrenheit. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you're still enjoying this series on how to build a Mars weather app. We only got one more left in this series where we're going to build out that thing on the bottom. That one has a whole bunch more going into it because we have a little bit of typography to do but we got to get the whole functionality of it to actually go up and down and of course we need those things that are going to slide in and slide out and have some animations on all of that as well. That's in the next video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed so you don't miss that one. A big thank you for watching this one of course and a big thank you to all my patrons for helping support everything I do here and of course until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.